Okay, quick situation update. We accidentally lost some a t-shirt while hanging up our clothes on the laundry line and now we're trying to rescue it. Nice and slow. Oh, we did it. <laughs> Awesome. I thought that was gone for sure. Well, it's Sunday today and the weather turned out kind of amazing. We have no big plans today whatsoever. So basically right now we're just enjoying some tea at a beautiful tea garden and might wander around the Moda neighborhood a little bit more and just kind of take it easy. The other thing we wanted to talk about today, is it's kind of a, like an easy breezy day, is a little bit about the cost of living being a remote worker here, which we are. We're spending a month here, so we kind of have a sense of what, you know, grocery costs are, restaurant costs, alcohol, all of that. And by sharing with you, you'll get a sense of what it might be like for you to come here for a month or two. Ladies couldn't get us out of there fast enough. By the way, we're Michael and Lindsay, and if you're interested in living the part-time nomad lifestyle like we do, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Moda, we found, has a little bit more green space, it feels like, so it's kind of got these like park-like settings and like wider boulevards where people can wander down, and so, yeah, it's just like got this easy breezy kind of feel for strolling around and walking, and there's a lot of cool shops and restaurants and beautiful buildings down here, so just keep wandering past more and more restaurants where I'm like, maybe we should go there, or maybe we should go there, so, I don't know, it's really cool, it's a very inviting neighborhood, so, I um, yeah, I'm really happy that we're down here today. Anyway, yeah, they had a the place had a cocktail drawing of cocktail on their sign, and so it beckoned to me. Well, it's like you know, late afternoon, absolutely, on the weekend. It's kind of the perfect time. <laughs> There's nothing like a glass of like crisp wine on a on a lovely sunny day. So, okay, I think it's time we talk about alcohol here in Istanbul. It's very expensive, very expensive, and that's because it's highly taxed by the government. Generally speaking, if you buy a cocktail at a place like this or almost anywhere, European side, Asian side, doesn't matter, it's going to run you about 20 bucks. A barrel will probably cost you about three to five dollars. And we've been buying Raki 35 centiliters, 350 milliliters, for about 500 Turkish lira, which is about $20. It's a very tasty falafel. Lots of good flavor. Okay, we're done at Dune, and now we're gonna go have a coffee. Uh, it's a little bit of ways away, so I'm probably gonna have to use Google Maps to get there, but we'll, we'll make it. Food this evening slash afternoon was 870 Turkish lira. Uh, we should note, however, that that did include alcohol, so a glass of wine and beer, which was probably about a third of the cost in total. So our experience so far has been that over here on the Asian side, you can probably get a really nice, very filling meal for anywhere from like 300 lira up to like 650 plus, I would say, um, which is pretty reasonable. If you head over to the European side of the city where it's a little bit more tourist heavy, costs are definitely going to be a little bit higher. They could be as much as double. Um, thank you hot beverages. Um, if you're having like chai, so like a really traditional tea is about 35 or 40 lira, so it's quite inexpensive. If you have Turkish coffee, it's a little bit more, but not too much. Uh, but if you start talking about more like a traditional flat white, cappuccinos, anything more like that, um, you're looking about four or five Canadian dollars. So restaurants are one thing, but what about the cost of groceries? We're finding that shopping here is pretty comparable to the cost of things in Canada. Some things are more expensive, some things are a lot cheaper. We'll share a few examples with you.
Okay, we're having a little, a little laugh debate here because the hotel where we're going is visible. We can actually see it, it's not too far away. But we're thinking of taking a tram. So that we can take the tram. Yeah, so we can Take's enjoy the, the tram. Yeah. But it might literally be one stop. Don't judge us. We miss it. Time to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's our here's where we're going. I'm gonna go up there somewhere. In terms of transportation, it's very inexpensive in Istanbul. Ferry rides just over a buck. Best way to get around, get yourself an Istanbul cart. They're wonderful. You can use your Istanbul cart for all kinds of transportation, including the metro, the tram that we just took, all sorts of things. So get one of those for sure. Not surprisingly, when it comes to accommodations, there are many options and many variables, like the time of the year you're here, what area you're staying in, how long you're staying in the city. But overall, we noticed that accommodations in Istanbul are quite reasonable. Our Airbnb apartment here in Katakoy costs about $50 per night. And you can easily find some pretty sweet apartments in the area for less than $100. Hotels are more expensive, but still more affordable than many parts of Europe. As a quick example, the five-star Doubletree Hilton Hotel that we're currently walking through is about 250 Canadian dollars per night. I mentioned cocktails earlier. Did I mention cocktails earlier? Is it me? It was me, right? I mentioned cocktails earlier. These ones are very expensive. I think combined, they're probably about the same amount as our full meal. But this is a very special treat. We're having a very special time, so it's no problem to pay for these, to get this lovely view and to finish our beautiful day, just kind of sitting here enjoying ourselves. So yeah, another great day in Istanbul. Overall, our take on Istanbul is that it's definitely affordable for a major European city, but we wouldn't call it cheap. Nomads and remote workers staying in an area like Moda and Katakoy on the Asian side will see a big difference when it comes to their budget. It's vibrant, less touristy, and more affordable than staying on the European side.